So welcome to this uh, e-cancer discussion about the chrysalis study uh, regarding patients with non-small cell lung cancer and an EGFR mutation. The results were recently reported in the ESMO Congress 2021, and I'm here with Dr. Catherine Shu to discuss about the results. Uh, Dr. Shu, maybe you want to discuss about the design of the study? Thank you. Um, thanks for having us. I'm a uh, thoracic oncologist based out of uh, Columbia University in New York um, and was one of the uh, co-authors of this abstract. Um, and, you know, this was an exciting study for us. We were looking at amivantamab, um, both monotherapy and in combination with a third generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor called lazertinib um, in patients who had progressed on osimertinib. And um, amivantamab was uh, recently approved in Exxon 20 insertions, um, and we are interested in seeing its activity in uh, EGFR mutations. And so um, the really exciting part, I think, about amivantamab is that um, it is a bispecific antibody, and so it can target the extracellular uh, EGFR domain. And then with the combination of lazertinib, we're able to also target um, the catalytic domain. So we kind of can target two um, areas of EGFR at the same time. And so maybe we can contribute to um, finding out, you know, even with acquired resistance mechanisms after uh, post-osomerinib failure. Okay. So in this study, um... Uh, 121 patients were enrolled in the monotherapy arm and um, uh, 45 patients received the combination of amizvantamab and lozetinib. Uh, the results found a quite interesting efficacy results with um, an objective response rate around 19% in the monotherapy arm and 36% um, in the combination arm. Um, duration of response was uh, 5.9 months in the monotherapy arm and 9.6 months in the combination arm. Uh, do you think these results uh, could change the um, uh, strategy for these patients with uh, uh, EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer? Yeah, I mean, I was I was um, impressed with the with the combination numbers. Um, I think that. Again, like having the two together, there seems to be some sort of synergistic response. Um, I was um, particularly interested in the uh, CNS penetration. I think, you know, none of us really know yet I, what, uh, how well amivantamab penetrates into the brain, but we know that lazertinib um, has good brain penetration. And it seemed like the combination um, definitely decrease the risk of CNS progression. Um, so I thought that was that was like a really interesting thing about the combination. What is also interesting, I think, is that in the combination arm, uh, there was uh, no selection regarding the mechanism of resistance to azimertinib. So uh, the efficacy results are quite, um, well, interesting, and this population was not selected. So it's also interesting. And I think that that's, uh, we're still trying to figure out what the best biomarker um, might be for, for resistance. Um, and I think that, you know, the good thing is that um, we are doing other trials with Chrysalis 2, looking at various other cohorts with, um, with this combination, both with, you know, the biomarker validation, but then there's also a cohort for, um, for rare EGFR mutations. Um, and then, um, a cohort for post OC, post platinum uh, chemotherapy cohort. So I think it's it's good that we're kind of looking at all of these various uh, situations. Sure, we um, also had uh, results in the small Congress from amivantamab in the specific populations of patients with met alterations, uh, which uh, may be uh, the best uh, populations of patients to um, receive amivantamab as a monotherapy, uh, I think, which is so interesting. Yeah, what do you think um, in the future, you know, there's a Mariposa trial looking at 
first line, you know, amivantamab with lizertinib and uh, versus osimertinib. Do you have any, uh, any thoughts? The preliminary results of the combination of uh, amivantamab and lazertinib in the population of patients with uh, treatment naive EGFR mutant non small cell lung cancer were really impressive because the first results reported uh, an objective response rate of a uh, hundred of hundred percent. So they were quite impressive. So I think. This trial is particularly interesting, and I, I think that maybe this uh, will be the, the treatment option for the first line treatment of these patients with uh, uh, EGFR mutant non small cell lung cancer. I, I'm very, you know, I'm very interested in seeing how those results kind of come out. I think patients, you know, from a patient standpoint, being just on one pill a day is definitely easier than being on, you know, an IV infusion every week. Um, but, uh, you know, so I think it'll depend on, on what those numbers show. And what do you think about uh, patients or physicians that are afraid about the infusion related reactions with amivantamab? So that's a great question. I mean, I think that um, when you look at the safety profile for amivantamab, um, the infusion related reaction, they you do see in a significant proportion of the patients, um, but it does tend to be on that first infusion. I haven't had really any patients um, have that reaction after the second one. Um, and I had given amivantamab like kind of in the very beginning when we were all still learning about the drug. And um, I think we've gotten a lot better about treating the infusion, you know, or preventing the infusion related reactions. Like now we give a lot of pre-medications and we give steroids and Benadryl and famotidine. And so I think that um, we've gotten better at it. And um, I do always warn patients before they get their first dose. I tell them that this might happen and to speak to the nurses if they feel any sort of funny feelings. Um, but I tell them also that this tends to be something that we see with only the first or second dose and not really afterwards. So I think it's, you know, I definitely think it's manageable, even if it's a little bit scary for patients in the beginning. Yourself, have you had any differing uh, experience? I completely agree with you. Uh, we only had um, uh, just great one or two uh, infusion related reactions and it was always during the first infusion. So cycle one, day one with no occurrence afterwards. So this is what we also tell patients, don't worry about that. If you feel something, if you feel bad during the first day of the treatment, this won't happen again afterwards. So yeah. The other thing I've noticed with the combination is that their rash um, is worse because um, I've given a lot of amivantamab monotherapy and, and the rash is, I think, definitely worse with the combination, which, I mean, which makes sense. Um, but I've had some patients with, you know, um, kind of even like mouth sores, um, you know, they, and they have um, like perinicchia and, and fissures in their fingers and as well as just kind of that like generalized acneiform rash. Um, so that's definitely something that I get them in to see the dermatologist like as soon as possible. This is also our experience here where these skin uh, adverse events are even more uh, an issue that the infusion related reactions and they are uh, due to lizardinib. That's what I think too. So thank you, Dr. Xu, for this discussion. I think that we can uh, take home as a message that uh, the combination of amivantamab and lazertinib is a promising option for these patients with the EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer. We are waiting for the results uh, uh, in the first line setting. And the, the safety profile is quite good with manageable side effects and especially for the infusion related uh, reactions. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Goodbye.